This is the Black Information Network Daily Podcast, and I'm your host, Ramses Ja. And sometimes the amount of stories that make their way to us means that we simply can't cover everything that comes our way. But from time to time, a story just stays with me, and I feel compelled to share it with you and give you my thoughts. And now, one more thing. Okay. So today, we are going to talk about us. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about who we are as people, or who we want to be as people, as black people. And you're going to want to stick around while I make a point that I really want you to ponder today. But we're going to start in Colorado Springs. Um, If you're like me and you pay attention to the news, you might be familiar with another mass shooting. Um, This one being perhaps more high profile than some of the lesser known uh, mass shootings because this one was at a known gay club. So the club is called Club Q. And this time, uh, five people lost their life. A 22-year-old shooter entered the club and started shooting people uh, as mass shootings tend to go. Now, uh, when you look at those numbers so far, you think, okay, well, at least it wasn't as deadly as some of the deadlier mass shootings that we know about. Um, and you, you'd be right. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of the silver lining. But I want to add another component here that I think will help me um, in painting this picture for you. There were 25 people injured meaning this person went in and got his rounds off. There's this 25 human beings shot with guns that are supposed to be used for hunting. I I have no idea why these guns exist in the world, but, you know, that's a much bigger conversation than the one I'm prepared to have today. Um, And, of course, it's being investigated as a hate crime. And if you're like me, you know that we can save everyone a lot of time by simply saying, of course it's a hate crime. Of course it's a hate crime. Uh, Very reminiscent of the 2016 uh, mass shooting in Orlando that left 49 people dead who were out partying, having fun, celebrating, of course, in another gay nightclub. And... What I want to leave you with today, it won't be long, but what I want to leave you with is a thought. Have we failed our LGBTQIA community, brothers and sisters, human beings, endowed with consciousness from our common creator, whoever you choose that to be? for your own storyline. Have we failed them? And something tells me the answer is yes. We've absolutely failed them. As a country, right? Sure, this country has historically not done right by a lot of us. We know that story all too well black people. So let's take it a step further. Have we, the black delegation, failed our LGBTQIA brothers and sisters and others? And again, I say yes, we have. So why is that? Well, 
I've heard it said that we don't appreciate that community interfering with our struggle, compromising our potential for progress, et cetera, on and on. And I don't believe that to be true. I'm a big fan of Fred Hampton. Uh, you know, He's one of the folks that I, I, I just love his story and I love his approach to building bridges across communities finding ways that we can become stronger together. I think that is the human way. We are social creatures. It is encoded in our biology to cooperate with each other. Most days when you wake up in your life, you cooperate with the people around you. Conflict is something that is very, tr very troubling. This is not our normal state. Granted, it's a part of our human experience, but it's not, you know, where we derive the most pleasure. So his approach with the Rainbow Coalition, building bridges, you know, from our community to other marginalized communities, making sure that we all understood each other's struggles and how we could be stronger together in moving an agenda forward. I love that. But. Not everyone does. Not everyone did at that time. And uh, certainly a lot of uh, the opposition didn't love it. And, you know, as illustrated by the rest of his story, him getting killed in his apartment um, under some shady circumstances. So, you know, some food for thought there. What is it that has caused us to fall short of really being there? Um, for our brothers and sisters who um, subscribe to alternative lifestyles. I'll be honest, I, I'm doing my best every day I wake up to be a better ally to everyone. So the language is something I'm still learning of how to articulate and identify and define um, uh, uh, people who um, have different path through life than me. Um, but hopefully you hear the intent, and I mean no offense if I misspeak. But I also want to leave you with something. I want you to ponder this. Because this is where I've been in my thoughts since this news broke. I think it has something to do with the church. Now, this might not be your story, but I grew up in a church where I look back on it and the values were very conservative, which again, conservative values aren't the worst thing in the world. But the fact is that we live in a very progressive world. There's no two ways about it. Progress. It is our human tendency, right? Once our brains grew, we started developing complex societies and then our technology grew and so forth and so on. And we're still growing today. Progress is the name of the game we're playing here. So conservative values are sometimes at odds with the natural progression of things. And being in black church growing up, and mind you, my father was a minister, as was his father. I came up in this tradition. Um, I went to other churches. I listened to other ministers. And the general consensus, I'll be honest, I didn't get too much of this in my house, but the general consensus from all of these pastors that had nourished my young mind growing up, uh, moving around different places, going to different churches, spending time in different fellowships, the general consensus was that uh, the Lord <laughs> looked unfavorably upon people who subscribed to an alternative lifestyle. And that's funny to me because when I got a little older, I realized it wasn't the Lord at all. You know, if we are Old Testament, then let's be Old Testament. If we love Jesus, then let's be New Testament, right? But what, it, what I ended up learning is that a lot of these preachers would take passages from the Bible 
two different uh, moments in time, two different uh, motivations, I guess, for the authors, two different um, uh, sets of culture and philosophy to capture combined in one book across two different testaments. And that's how we end up with a book that contradicts contradicts itself at several points. But um, yeah, if you grow up in that tradition and you, you know, teach your children or take ideas into your community, um, it may end up being the case that you feel very distant from the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and that's something that I really feel like we need to work on. I believe it was Gandhi that quoted, that is quoted saying, uh, I like your Christ. I don't like your Christians because they are so unlike your Christ. Now, uh, Gandhi, of course, was not a Christian man. Um, but, you know, this is an objective view of our faith-based tradition. You know, me, a famously <laughs> liberal individual, bleeding heart liberal, I've been uh, referred to as, I believe in the greatest good of all people. Um, if you're listening to my voice right now, you are my brother, you are my sister, and I love you. And I'm doing my best for you as well every day of my life. I have no reason to wake up and do anything less than that. It's so strange to know that this man is absolutely right. It's so strange to know that the things that I think of in terms of you know, uh, the political parties in this country, Republicans, Democrats, I look at Republicans as the, the party of Christ in Christianity, and I see that Republicans are so unlike Christ. You know, there's lots of videos and, you know, it, it, it's, it's like a joke. How hypocritical um, the Republican philosophy is when it when you compare it to a Christian philosophy. And I want us to think about how we look cast in the same light. We are a people who historically have fought for equal rights. This is our story in this country. You know, we're writing new chapters every day, but the long story is we had to make some progress, right? You know, for us to look at these other communities and not feel a connection, not feel empathy, not feel like our agendas are aligned, I think that we're missing the point. I think that we are um, asking for people to be our allies and not willing to be allies ourselves. Um, and I haven't always been on top of this. I'll admit, you know, I learned a lot in 2020 about what uh, our trans brothers and sisters go through. And it's interesting that this uh, attack in Colorado Springs took place um, on the eve of Transgender Remembrance Day. That's a tough road. And we are in a position to be stronger allies to these human beings, again, endowed with this, with consciousness from our same creator. Whoever you decide that creator is, you know, that creator made us and every single trans human being on this planet. And, uh, yeah, I just want us to think about this. How can we, how can we do better? What is it that we want in terms of support? And if, if we can define what we want, Let's be willing to offer that support, that same energy to folks who are in need um, and who are mourning and grieving. Because we can. And because this is our way. 
Um, I regret leaving you with such a grim story, a heavy story, but um, one of the things that popped into mind before I let you go is uh, a bright moment that one of the drag performers ended up stomping out the gunman on some those performer platform heels. Uh, I just kind of love that. And while we're while the rest of the country is wrestling with gun problems and you know hate crimes and so forth and so on, I think that we can reassess what it means to be allies, what it means to be Christian, if that's your faith tradition, what it means to love our brothers and sisters, what love we expect. And I think it's it's time for us to revisit those um, thoughts and reshape our actions if we find that we're falling short of what we would want if we were in the same position. All right. Now, as always, maybe I'm wrong. You may know more than I do, and I invite you to have this conversation with me. You can do so at the iHeartRadio app. Use the red microphone talkback feature and send me your thoughts. Um, of course, I'm on all social media at Ramses Ja, and I'd always love to hear from you. So let me know what you think, and we'll go from there. All right? Until next time, y'all. Peace. This has been a production of the Black Information Network. Today's show is produced by Chris Thompson. Have some thoughts you'd like to share? Use the red microphone talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app. While you're there, be sure to hit subscribe and download all of our episodes. I am your host, Ramses Ja, on all social media. Join us tomorrow as we share our news with our voice from our perspective, right here on the Black Information Network Daily Podcast.